I tried beating the Vitality mod in Terraria. This is a brand new mod that introduces tons of new weapons, accessories, armor sets, and even bosses. Will I be able to progress within the Vitality mod and defeat all of the bosses or will I get absolutely wrecked and lose all will to live? Well. Let's find out. I started off by spawning into the world, opening up my starter bag, and consuming some of the life crystals. I checked the boss checklist to figure out what bosses we're gonna have to fight, and after doing that, I went over to check all the brand new crafting recipes. I was overwhelmed and got scared, so I quickly turned it off and went straight into chopping trees. I built myself an NPC house, and upon checking all the crafting recipes, I built myself more NPC houses in order to get more NPCs to move in. On the fall of night, I decided to craft myself a wooden slingshot, and this was my major decision to go with the ranger class. Of course, this mod does introduce countless new weapons for various different classes, but for this video, I'm gonna go with the ranger loadout. I went over to the desert in order to get myself some sand, as we needed glass in order to craft ammo for the slingshot. Upon coming back to spawn, on, I crafted myself a few pieces of cactus armor, got myself these glass shards which we could use as ammo for the slingshot, and then after this I started digging straight down in order to make myself a elevator. During this process I got myself some ores, I got myself a couple of potions naturally, and I dug my way down to a glowing mushroom biome. To the right of it was a chest, so I went there, opened it up, picked up the accessories and all the loot, and then used my wooden slingshot in order to clear all of the mobs from the mushroom biome. I got myself a hook which means we can craft ourselves a grapple hook once we come back to spawn, and so I continued digging my elevator until I got stuck on some obsidian which prompted me to come back to spawn. Since I had a couple summons for the Eye of Cthulhu and it was nighttime, I spawned it in and tried to defeat it. Using a golden bow and the wooden slingshot, we managed to take out the Eye of Cthulhu, and using the demonite bars, I crafted myself a demonite bow. We summoned in and fought the Eye of Cthulhu once more, and took it out with the wooden slingshot. I consumed a life crystal, organized my chests, crafted myself a ebon wood slingshot, slingshot which dealt far more damage than the regular plain wood slingshot and then I proceeded to make myself more NPC houses. I finished building a little arc of homes which all of my lovely NPCs are going to live in and after this I went over to the corruption biome in order to break the demon orbs to summon in the eater of worlds. Using the demon bow and the ebon wood slingshot I genuinely tried to take out the eater of worlds but I was unsuccessful as I was very underpowered and my defense was horrific so I ended up dying. But this wasn't really a problem as once I came back to spawn I had all the resources to craft myself another anvil called the twisted anvil. This will let us craft weapons beyond the eater of worlds meaning that we're probably not gonna have to fight him anymore. I crafted the twisted anvil using shadow scales and some silk and then using a gold bow, life crystal and three arrows I crafted myself the jester's bow. This dealt 21 damage and converted every single wooden arrow into a jester's arrow which would pierce every mob that it hit. Jester's arrows are very overpowered so to essentially have every wooden arrow turn into a jester arrow is absolutely absurd. Since I had enough shadow scales to craft myself the nightmare pickaxe, I went over to the underworld and started mining up hellstone. Upon getting enough hellstone, I came back to spawn and crafted myself a bunch of hellstone bars. I went back over to the corruption and summoned in the eater of worlds. Using the jester bow, we absolutely shredded through this boss and finally managed to defeat it. See, all we needed was a little bit more damage and we were good to go. I sold all of my useless items to the NPCs, and using shadow scales as well as silk, I crafted myself a full set of Robin armor, which is one of the best pre-hard mode armor sets within the game. Since it was raining, we could actually summon in a boss from the vitality mod called the storm cloud. All we had to do was get ourselves 20 cloud and craft a summon for it. So that's what I did and I found an open area to summon him in and fight him. This was a very interesting boss fight and the sad cloud sadly stood no chance against us. Using the jester's bow, we absolutely wrecked this boss and upon defeating it, it just dropped us a mage weapon which was absolutely useless to us. After this, I started making myself an artificial mushroom biome, and along with this, I crafted myself a brand new weapon called the Eater of Bullets. This was made using 10 rotten chunks, and it shot out these little eaters that would follow your enemies wherever they went. After this, I crafted myself a full set of Skyforged armor, which gave us the ability of flight that paired extremely well with our double jump. After this, we can now move on to the next boss of the Vitality mod called the Grand Antlion. This was a massive antlion that we could summon in the desert and check this out. 
out. I made the boss summon for it, came back over to the desert, and spawned him in. This boss fight was absolutely crazy. I mean, he was shooting sand everywhere all over the place. It was super hard to dodge, and without the Skyforge armor, I genuinely don't think we would have killed this boss. I picked up the dried bars and the snowball cannon that he ended up dropping, which was actually a ranged weapon, so I guess we got something useful. But after this, I went over to Skeletron's dungeon, defeated Skeletron, and went down to fight his little skeleton minions. I managed to get myself the Muramasa gun, which we are later going to craft into an even more powerful weapon. And after this, I spent the rest of my time picking up water candles, freeing the mechanic, and opening up golden chests. Upon coming back to spawn, I realized that we needed to get ourselves some jungle materials. So, I went over to the jungle and started mining for jungle spores and tried to kill hornets to get some stingers. I also managed to find this brand new ore called geranium ore that infested our world once we killed Skeletron. I picked up as much of that as I could as well, and after all the resources were collected, I came back to spawn. Using the geranium bars, I crafted myself a geranium bow, and with our newfound power, I decided to summon in and fight the Eye of Cthulhu once more. Remember how hard it was to kill the Eye of Cthulhu at the start of the game? Well, after two hours of progression, we were absolutely shredding through this boss, which showed me that this class does have some promise. I crafted myself the Molten Fury as we were going to need that to combine it into a better bow. And lastly, I needed to get myself the Phoenix Blaster, meaning that we're gonna have to go get the handgun from Skeletron's dungeon. So I went back into his dungeon, grinded out a bunch of keys and chests until I found myself the handgun. And upon coming back to spawn, I crafted myself the Phoenix Blaster. I went over to a demon altar having all the pre hard mode bows and crafted myself the Unholy Star, which was a bow that dealt 45 damage and turned every arrow into an unholy holy arrow. Along with this, I crafted myself the Night Blaster, which was the best pre-hard mode ranger gun in the game. Once our weapons were on point, I got myself a bunch of musket balls. After this, I went over to the ocean in order to pick myself up some seashells, sea stars, and coral, so I could craft myself a weapon called the Barrel, which shot out sharks. And upon coming back to spawn, I crafted myself a boss summon called the Moonlight Lotus Flower. This summoned in this moth-looking boss over near the ocean, so I teleported over there and summoned it in. To take out this boss, I used the Sand Shark, which was an upgraded mini shark, and then after this, I spammed it with the Jester's Bow. The attacks were fairly easy to dodge, but I mean, I wasn't even on expert mode, so this makes sense. We took out the boss, meaning that we are now ready to move on to the Wall of Flesh, and then later start challenging the hard mode bosses. I got myself a bunch of buff potions, went down to the Underworld, built myself an arena, chucked the Guide Voodoo Doll into the lava, and then used the Barrel, the Night Blaster, and essentially all the rest of the various different weapons in my inventory to defeat the wall of flesh and put us into hard mode. The first thing I did was went over to the corruption and bless my world with palladium, or a calcum, and adamantite. I used my jester's bow to take out all of the wraiths, and then I started the infinite pickaxe progression. I got myself enough palladium to craft myself a palladium pickaxe, and then using the palladium pickaxe, I got myself enough orichalcum to craft an orichalcum anvil and an orichalcum pickaxe, and then using that, I went to go get myself adamantite. Using the adamantite that I had, I crafted myself an adamantite hunting rifle and an adamantite slingshot. The hunting rifle was a ranged weapon that actually dealt the most damage within the mod, but it had a very slow fire rate, so it honestly wasn't even really worth using. And same thing for the slingshot, it was kind of garbage, so I decided to go and look for better weapons instead. While mining the hallowed, I managed to find myself a summon for Queen Slime, so upon coming back to spawn, I got greedy and thought I could definitely take her out using the weapons that I had right now. So I summoned her in and we got absolutely demolished. I built myself a tiny arena and once it turned to daytime, I summoned her in and tried to fight her again. Apparently, Boyo doesn't learn his lesson, which prompted me to die once more. After this, I decided to actually gear up, so I got myself full titanium armor. I farmed out a bunch of spiders to get myself enough spider fangs and I crafted myself a spider bow, which was the most powerful weapon in our arsenal as of now. And then after this, I tried to fight Queen Slime once more. We got her down super low this time actually, but before we could kill her, I ended up dying. Upon growing two more brain cells, I made myself more NPC houses. I went to go farm in the underworld for Souls of Night, and once I came back to spawn, there was a Blood Moon. I grinded out the Blood Moon for a little bit, and then I went over to the Sky Islands in order to kill myself some Wyverns and Harpies to get myself the Harpy Wings. Once I came back to spawn, I crafted myself a pair of Harpy Wings, made sure I had all of my Adamantite armor on, and and then I summoned in the Queen Slime. This time I actually managed to defeat her because I was smart and got myself a pair of wings.
wings and had decent armor. And right after we defeated Queen Slime, we actually got invaded by goblins. Of course, since our weapons were pretty decent, I used the spider bow and the unholy star to absolutely destroy all of the goblins and take out the goblin army rather quickly. And then as soon as it turned to nighttime, I summoned in the destroyer. Using the jester's bow, which shot out jester's arrows, we absolutely made fun of the destroyer. And once we beat this boss in the bottom left, it prompted the ice caves to grow with arctic ore. We didn't really need to pay too much attention to that because we could actually use the hallowed bars to upgrade our jester's bow. We combined it with the hallowed bars to craft ourselves the starstruck and then I summoned in the twins. Using this new bow, we absolutely demolished spasmatism first and he actually ended up dropping us a flamethrower which we used to destroy retinazer and then later skeletron prime. But there was one tiny problem. As we were fighting skeletron prime and we got him very low, it turned into daytime and then he proceeded to one shot me, meaning that we were gonna have to leave it for the next night. Well, instead of doing nothing and waiting, I decided to go down to the underworld and fight one of the vitality mods bosses. I crafted myself the summon for it using a candle and 10 essence of fire, and then I went down to the underworld and summoned in the dreadnought. Using the unpleasant starstruck and the queen slime mount, we jiggled our way around the boss, avoided all of his bullet hell attacks, and took him out very easily. He dropped us a summoner weapon, which was kind of garbage as we can't really use summons, but after this I came back to spawn and then went over to the ice biome to collect myself some arctic ore just to see what it was all about. I realized that it was quite useless and after this I waited for it to turn to nighttime, summoned in Skeletron Prime and then defeated him. The jungle now grows restless, meaning we can now go fight Salad Boss. Salads are full of vegetables my mother told me, but you know what else turns into a vegetable if they don't subscribe to Boyo Boyo? That's right the person watching this video. So, I recommend you subscribe to the channel. After this, I combined that one Knight's Edge bow that I had with all of the souls to craft myself the true unholy star, and then I went over to the jungle to mine up Chlorophyte. Once we had enough Chlorophyte, I came back to spawn and combined the Starstruck, which was that one upgraded Jester's bow, with a bunch of Chlorophyte to make myself the true Starstruck, which shot stars and Jester's arrows out of the sky. After this, I got myself a couple of resources Sources from the hallowed biome to craft myself the summon for the chaos bringer which was another boss from the vitality mod. Along with this I got myself full chlorophyte armor and once it turned nighttime in the hallowed biome I summoned it in and proceeded to absolutely wreck this boss using the starstruck. This reminded me of the empress of light somewhat just because of all the rainbow attacks and he was very fun to actually fight. But regardless of this we used the flame sprayer and our overpowered arsenal of bows to take out the boss and upon defeating the boss it actually dropped us a bunch of chaos bars. Upon coming back to spawn, I defeated more of the mechanical bosses in order to get Plantera's bulb to spawn in and so I can get myself more hallowed bars. And upon defeating the bosses, I bought myself a bunch of buff potions, went over to the jungle, dug out an arena for Plantera, and summoned her in. We managed to defeat Salad Boss on our very first try and it was honestly quite easy. I totally did not almost die and once we defeated her, I went over to Golem's Temple, got myself as many lizard power cells as I could, and also also got myself the summon for the solar eclipse. I rushed back to spawn and thankfully it recently had turned daytime meaning that it was perfect timing to summon in the solar eclipse. I grinded out a bunch of mothrons to get myself broken hero swords and using the broken hero swords and the two bows that I had I crafted myself the all star. This was essentially the ultimate bow from the vitality mod and not only did it deal a crazy amount of damage but it shot projectiles from the sky and very fast arrows that would absolutely demolish any mob that got in its way. After this I went back into Golem's temple, I buffed up and using the all star we absolutely demolished Golem, not once, not twice, but I am too lazy to count how many times we defeated him, just know that it was a lot. I did this until I got myself a pigsaw and since we were in the jungle I got myself more chlorophyte bars. After this I went to go get myself as many mushrooms as I could in order to craft myself shroomite armor. Upon coming back to spawn I crafted myself a shroomite dart blaster, I made myself full shroomite armor and then I went over to the dungeon in order to farm out ectoplasm. We needed this to summon in another boss, but let me tell you boyos, this was not fun whatsoever. We died countless times trying to grind out these materials, so I just decided to actually buy it from an NPC because I could not be asked to go back to the dungeon and keep on dying. Before going to fight the very final boss of the vitality mod, I made sure to get myself all of the best accessories. I got myself absolutely everything so I would not die to this boss. I bought a bunch of buff potions and then I I 
use the spirit box within the dungeon to summon in the paladin spirit. This is, as suggested, a spirit that kind of looked like the dungeon paladins. I mean, it's very self-explanatory, but this boss was very fun to fight. It dealt loads of damage, and it was actually somewhat of a challenge for me. I actually thought that I was going to die at certain points within the boss fight, but luckily, we managed to take it out, and after we defeated this boss, I flew right up from the dungeon and challenged Lunatic Cultist. We took out the Lunatic Cultist using the All-Star, which prompted the summon for the Celestial Pillar event. I went to go take out the Vortex Pillar first, as that would provide us with Vortex Fragments that we could use to craft ourselves the Vortex Bow. So upon defeating the Pillar and coming back to spawn, I made myself the Phantasm, and then, using the extra Ectoplasm that I had, I made myself a bunch of Spectre Arrows. I actually decided to make myself an Endless Spectral Quiver, and then after this, I went to go challenge the remaining Pillars. I first moved on to fighting the Solar Pillar, and once that was destroyed, I went over to fight the Stardust Pillar. We took out the Stardust Pillar, and then I went to go buy myself a bunch of buff potions before going to take out the Nebula Pillar, but I managed to die while I was taking it out, giving me barely any time to come back to spawn and get ready for Moon Lord. I quickly ran to my arena, and using the All-Star and the Phantasm, I started spamming him with the Spectral Arrows, but boyos, there was a problem. I always use the Nurse to cheese the Moon Lord, but this time I had no coins on me, meaning that I had to try to take out Moon Lord without cheesing him with the Nurse. This didn't really work out too well, and as soon as we got to his core, he actually managed to take me out, and I died. I got super furious, I was very frustrated, so I sold all of my precious belongings to the NPCs for any spare pocket change, like an absolute crackhead, and once we had a little bit of money, I bought myself all of the buff potions again, and spawned in the Moon Lord once more. This time, we managed to take out all of his arms, and with his core remaining, I actually had the ability to choose him with the nurse, so we took out his core, and finally defeated the Moon Lord, finishing the Vitality mod. This mod contains far more content, so if you want to see me do another playthrough with this mod, be sure to drop a like on the video. If this video gets 5,000 likes, I'll be sure to do any other playthrough of your choosing. Anyways, be sure to check out another video like this on screen, consider subscribing to the channel if you're new. This has been Boyo, peace out.